Hey, Anissa Coy here with Firehouse Education and this week's Ask Anissa video column. And this week I am super excited to have a special guest uh, here with me. Jean Easter has agreed to be uh, on Ask Anissa with me this week and do an interview and share with us um, her expertise. Uh, Jean and I have actually never met in person before. She reached out to me after watching uh, my videos that I put out on r, &R Magazine. And uh, she does some amazing, incredible work when it comes to artwork and, and many other things actually that I'm gonna have her uh, talk with you about. And when she reached out to me and shared a little bit about her expertise, I decided to ask her if she would come on the column with me and let me ask some questions and, and be able to give all of you restorers out there some really amazing pointers and, and information. So thank you so much for uh, being on with me here this morning. I know you're back uh, on the East Coast or? Yes, well, in Indianapolis. Indianapolis, got it, mm -hmm. got it. Okay, so thank you for taking uh, time out of your day. Jean, uh, you know, it's, it's funny that we haven't ever come across and met before because Jean is really uh, an amazing lady in the industry. Uh, she, and I'm just gonna read this right from her bio because it, it came off really great on her website. Jean has actually been a professional associate in AIC since 1998 and has worked uh, with the Indianapolis Museum of Art from 1989 until 2001. And during that time, uh, she actually received a grant to turn the Indianapolis Art Council to study period English picture frames, which I find so fascinating, at the National Portrait Gallery um, in London. And in 2004, she was awarded a grant from AIC to study French cult, uh, furniture furniture making techniques in France. And in addition, she was selected to go to Cuba with AIC in 2010 to assess conservation methods. So, wow, we have a quite an expert here uh, with us today, you guys. So thank you uh, again, Jean, for taking time out uh, here to be with us. You actually own your own business there in Indianapolis. Will you tell us um, a little bit about your business, how long it's been there, and maybe what your website is? Sure. We, um, I started my business in 2001. I left the Indianapolis Museum of Art and we have kind of expanded. My expertise is in frame conservation and furniture. My business, however, we do paintings, we do prints. We also do objects such as glass and ceramics. Ooh. I have to tell you, there's probably not a lot that we don't do. We will take textiles in and we will turn them over to a specialist for cleaning. We do a lot of different types of material cleaning. Uh, and we also do matting, general matting and framing. And all of our matting and framing is archival. We use UV glass, we use acid-free materials. We do Japanese paper and wheat starch hinges. And we also clean prints. So we kind of do you know, a little bit of, an, of everything. And we also do work with about four restoration companies here in Indianapolis. When a crisis hits, we, a few years ago, there were a lot of freezing, um, winter was very cold, a lot of freezing happened, pipes broke, so a lot of things got water damaged. We also have fires, which if you have a fire, you usually have water damage as well. Right. So we have done a lot of that as well. Nice, nice. And I, I was actually looking on your website before we did this call and you, some of the work, the before and after pictures are incredible. There was even a fan, uh, you know, an actual fan. Right, that right. You had. China. Yes. yes. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, we're going to, I'm, I'm definitely going to put links below the video, you guys, to um, Jean's website for her company. You are going to want to have her information and keep it in your arsenal. You know, I always tell you guys about having your Rolodex of specialists, if you will, to handle those things like, you know, your art people, your jewelry people, uh, the grandfather clocks, taxidermists in, in the Pacific Northwest. We have a ton of what we call horns and hides. So having someone like Jean on your Rolodex is powerful and you can send things to her and she has quite mm -hmm. a variety 
of what um, you know she actually does work on, which I think is is wonderful. So what I've done is I got a few questions together that a lot of people ask me about. So what I've done is I've kind of put together just a few questions, Jean, that I want to ask you. We'll we'll kind of go from there. So one of the questions that I had for you was when you first reached out to me, you talked about, you know, being careful in um, a restoration contractor actually causing more damage in a situation. Right. So one of the things I wanted to have you share with everybody was what everyday factors play a role in causing damage to a piece of art? Like, you know, we know window coverings, we have, you know, just the, the air, the sunshine, right. like what are some everyday factors for a restoration contractor to maybe look at in a home that we're in and dealing with that could give us a big clue that, hey, there might be some, you know, real serious um, concerns here? Okay. One of the things that we um, tell people is, you tell people this, but it's very hard for some people to follow through. Mm -hmm. Don't hang art on an outside wall because of the temperature and humidity fluctuation. That is where you're going to have the greatest fluctuation if you don't have a home that is humidity and temperature controlled. And most people don't. The other thing is UV. UV comes from everything. It comes from the lights that you have on overhead. It comes from the lights that you have on your lamps. Everything. Sunlight. Don't hang things in direct sunlight. Unless you have windows that have a film of UV over them. And a lot of people probably don't have that as well. The other thing is improper art handling. When you clean something, if you have a print and it has glass over it, and you want to spray the Windex on it, which you probably should not be using Windex. Now, there's other two, two other products that I would recommend. You want to not do that. If you want to clean the glass, spray it on the cloth, yeah. then clean it so you don't get that on the frame. If your frame is gilded, that, that material that you're using to clean the glass is going to take off your gold. It just the improper handling. The other thing I tell people, and this is just general information, when you hang something, always use two hooks, because if you use one hook, the, prob the probability of it coming off or even just slanting and then falling off is great. And I always tell people with paintings, put a backboard on it. I can't tell you how many times a painting has come in because it has fallen off the wall, fallen backwards, and it gets punctured. The other thing that I might suggest also, get rid of those little eye hooks that you've put the wires on and always use B rings. Those eye hooks keep us in business because they get, <laughs> they become loose and then they wanna just, the frame just wants to spring off the wall and there you're done, you're done. Well, so those are just some general things. That's awesome. And any of you watching this who have taken my class, you know that I do, I say exactly that. Don't ever spray your cleaning product for the glass on the glass. You do one of two things, just as Jean said, you spray the cloth, then you wipe. If you're gonna leave the you know frame and everything together, oftentimes we take frames apart, mm -hmm. but again, the caveat is, if it's a high-end art piece, I'm dealing, I'm dealing with somebody like Jean and I'm not taking anything apart. I don't, I'm not doing anything. I'm, I'm packaging it so that I can get it to her. Mm -hmm. Now, right. that's actually kind of my next question for you. And by the way, we're going to go hold back to that Windex comment because I'm dying to know what you want to okay. say. About. But so let's say I have this piece of art and uh -huh. I know that it is something that needs to go to say someone like you. Right. And, and I've got soot, you know, it's covered. Let, let's say it's, um, whether it's covered in glass or not, but it's got soot all over it. Okay. How, what, what do you recommend that I do as a restoration contractor to triage, if anything, that piece prior to packaging it up and sending it to you? Because if I just leave that on there and then I ship it to you, is that worse because it has longer dwell time? Like, what would you tell me in that? What I would say probably is if you could take the, the piece if you want to brush down the frame, but I would say do not do anything to the surface of the painting. I would say wrap it in glassine, bubble wrap, I mean, really secure it, ship it to me, I mean, or, sh you know, take it to a conservator where it can be cleaned. Because what you don't want to do is you don't want to start getting any kind of moisture on that surface that's then going to start rubbing that soot in because soot is very difficult to remove. We have proprietary solutions that we make specifically for that. And if you don't use the right thing, what you're doing is 
you're rubbing it right into the surface of the painting and that's what you don't want to do right so like a gilded frame jean and i've got soot all over it would you tell me to do anything to probably if it's real gold i would not i mean we make solutions of triammonium citrate and again if you bring it to a ph of seven but if you don't have a litmus paper, if you don't, you know what I mean? If you don't have the right kind of a muck, then it becomes a problem. And then if you do do that and you start cleaning off the paint or the frame, you're going to start removing the gold. And that's something that you don't want to do because if it's a good frame and it's in good condition otherwise, once you start removing that gold, it becomes a whole can of worms. I mean, and that's what we do every day, restoring paintings like that with frames that are gilded. You don't want to get into that because now it's it just become you're compounding your right your dam so you said brushing off what would you recommend that we use to brush you, something like that off you can use those they're a cloth they're a like a pounce you can use a pounce to go over it like the outer edges so that you can handle it and i would recommend handling it with gloves for two reasons you don't want to get that on your skin number one and also you're gonna you're not going to be digging into the frame itself. You're not going to be digging into the gold. You're not going to leave any impression on it. You could go around it with that. I would say, or a soft cloth, or you may, you know, I would recommend using no moisture because moisture is going to take off gold leaf. And that's what you don't want to do. Now, if your frame is not gold, if it's metal leaf, that's a different situation. You probably could go over it with a tack cloth. And you can make your own tack cloth by taking cotton and spraying it with some water and then spraying it with some alcohol. You can make a nice tack cloth like that because if you don't know if it's an oil painting or an acrylic painting, you may not want to go and touch it. There's different, we don't always, we know usually when things are oil or acrylic, but we always test them first. We always test them in a small corner where we know, okay, this is going to remove paint. This is going to cross, you know, you don't know what it's going to do. Right. So, that's so why when we, you say soft cloth, are you, um, it, it, does it have to be a white cotton cloth? Can it be microfiber? And do you know anything about chem sponges or dry cleaning sponges that we use in our industry? And how do you feel about that? So you can't, you can use those. You can use those to Perfect. just kind of, you know, Clean. You're not gonna, right. yes, right. you're not going to get a completely 100% clean, but it right. will be at least, it won't be, you know, black. You're not going to deal right. with black. But, so yeah, I would say you could use those. Okay, so uh, you guys, for those of you that may not know what we're talking about is dry, we call them, in this industry, we call them chem sponge. They're dry cleaning mm -hmm. sponges is what um, they, they're uh, known as as well. And remember, I, I just wanna say this is a caveat, and again, any of you who have my training know this, you don't rub and scrub with a chem right. sponge. You, it's light right. strokes and you either go, mm -hmm. you know, side to side, up and down, but it's, it's light strokes. And what we're talking about is triaging and pulling off, you know, some of that initial soot so that mm -hmm. we can then package this product up and either ship it or take it to a conservationist like Jean to be able to handle, um, you know, the actual restoration of this item. So right. here's another super important question, um, Jean, that I think is really important for everybody. What, what are some, some things, I mean, I, I know I have my things that I teach, and so I'm hoping <laughs> they fall in line with what you say here, but um, how would you, what kind of pointers, maybe just three or four things that you could tell a restoration contractor that would help give us a clue, since we're not an expert on high-end art necessarily, that's out there and has a piece of art on a job, like what are some things we could look for that would tell us, wait a minute, that, I think that might be a high-end item or a, well, that's a, you know, a, a, an item that maybe is a little bit more expensive because of A, B, and C. What would you, what right. would you tell us to look for? I would look for a signature on a painting. That kind, I mean, and you don't, not always, you know, I sign my own paintings and my God, they're worth nothing. <laughs> a signature, a signature, a date. If it's a print, I would look for also, again, a signature and an addition mark. It's like, you know, if it's one out of 50 or something like that. Child's art, I mean, believe it or not, that means a lot to people. And it may not have a high dollar value, but those are sentimental. And those are the types of things that you can't put a dollar value on. Anything that, you know, it's hard to say because as a conservator, 
we are not allowed to determine value because it's a conflict of interest. Anything that comes to me, regardless of whether I really know that it's, you know, a dollar value or not, high end, I have to treat in the same way. However, there are certain things like if it's if it's if it's an oil painting or an acrylic painting that's a one of that is an original you know regardless of who did it now the person who owns it probably has given it some value if they framed it and if they okay if the client will tell you look i have a writer on my homeowner's insurance and these things are covered by it you know that's num that is number one if a um if the adjuster the claims adjuster has gone in and valued it because they have done the research that's another thing if the family has gone in and had has had it appraised that's an you know that's another way of knowing and those are just some of the things that you know some people will have a rider on their homeowners which they should and that covers it right. so those are the kinds of things that i mm -hmm. you know that i look for and, so, and and basically you know what after working in them you kind of know what's but you, you you know you kind of have to be a little bit um you know you have to be sensitive to the owners yeah. what they like to well so. i i i feel really good right now because <laughs> that's pretty much what i've been saying so yeah i'm glad because <laughs> i i definitely get i'm i'm not you guys i'm not an art per se expert do i know quite a bit about it from my years of handling it yes and like i said in the beginning of this video i also know most importantly when i need to take it to somebody like Jean. okay i'm mm -hmm. not a conservationist so i know when i need to say hey wait a second i need somebody here that has this specific talent because in content restoration especially you guys you're not i've never found anybody that's an expert in every single mm -hmm. thing like to have expertise you know now am i an expert i do feel like i'm an expert in my field because i've been doing this so long um in in but i have a lot of other ex experts behind me that i know that i can pull in when i need specific help okay on something or someone who's handled a situation more often than me so that's pretty much what i tell people to look for as far as value and i absolutely love that you mentioned and would stress that obviously something that is is child's art or um family member art absolutely there's it, that is priceless and, and i've dealt with a lot of that in my 20 years of doing this that right. you just cannot put a price tag on right on those items. Um, one of the things that I know that I also tell people when, you know, trying to determine a value on things is if you, if you, there's a piece of artwork and the back of it is wrapped in acid free paper, that's usually mm -hmm. kind of clue to me. Uh, number one, mm -hmm. the homeowner values it. That's, they don't care sure. for just a piece, you know, that they picked up at a yard sale or something. Right. So that, that's a big thing. The other thing is, is, you know, you guys, if you're going to do this kind of work, do a little bit of research, no frames, know a little bit about frames and what, you know, even an inexpensive frame that you take to, let's say, you know, in our area, Hobby Lobby is a huge craft thing. I'm not sure about where you're at, but you know, an inexpensive frame there. I went and had just a poster frame that I loved and it cost me like $170. So again, not high end it, it per right. se. You know, there are frames that can cost a lot more than that. Right. But if you see a very high detailed, heavy wooden frame that's on a piece of art, if it's a print and it has glass on the front of it, that tells me, okay wait a second too and just like jean said earlier if you see it on a wire and two hooks or two brads instead of just a single you know nail that also tells me a little bit of something about the value of potentially of the painting and bare minimum the value to my client the home right.